Ford has just signed the death warrant of the entire UK car industry. The industry is already in collapse on its knees, but Ford's current plans will finish it off totally. Our once great proud motor industry has just gone crazy. Collapse and bankruptcy are sure to swallow, follow swiftly. Well, five years ago, I received a small inheritance and decided to buy an investment property. I'm not rich, but a property producing a nice steady income from rent looked very attractive when interest rates and pension annuities were so ridiculously low. I did some research and found that Burnley and surrounding areas had many houses for sale in the twenty to thirty thousand pound price range. Not modernised, obviously, but with roof, doors and windows, uh, well, usually. Now that I could afford. And I'm also very handy at uh, property DIY, and I had a friend called Pete, and he was good. So further research found that the average rents in Burnley were around £600 a month. So working out £30,000 to buy, £20,000 to renovate, I could see a return of well over 10% and have a property that I owned that was appreciating in value that I could then sell whenever I wanted to, maybe if I wanted a round-the-world cruise. All this looked really good for me in my, in my retirement. So I bought one. A two-bedroom terrace with a roof, four walls and steel shutters for doors and windows. They were missing. Inside, no gas, no water, no kitchen, no sink, no heating, no way. It was literally just a shell, but solid. No subsidence and a solid waterproof roof. So, I and my mate Pete dived in. We decided to make it high quality. Not a cheap budget job. Windows and doors were fitted first, then gas, rewiring, plumbing, heating. All were good, well-known brands and professionally installed. Kitchen units were factory custom-made, not flat pack. And the bathroom was a famous brand name. Finally, replastering throughout, not by us, of course, by a professional. And then we dived into the tidying and the decorating. We finished, it took well over a year, but it looked really good and had full certificates and warranties. I contacted a local carpet firm to supply and fit good quality carpets and waterproof laminates flooring in the kitchen diner. I then approached an estate agent and got my first shock. The expected rent was £375 a month, not £600. Well, at that price it would still show a good return, probably approaching 10%, but that was disappointing especially when I was told the average price uh, for rent is £600, but that the area my house was in wouldn't get anywhere near that. It was mostly people on benefits, and housing benefits at the time were £375 a month. I pointed out the quality of the boiler, fitted kitchen, walk-in shower carpets, etc., and I was told I needn't have bothered. If a prospective renter had £600 to spend on rent... They would never live there. They wouldn't even look there. They would find better areas. Well, my first lesson learned. Now, my property rented out really quickly. Everybody absolutely loved it. I had a waiting list for it. Well, I did make money, probably about 9% per annum net return on investment, with nothing to do to it, as everything was brand new. Now, Ford, Stellantis, VW and many others have just made that exact same mistake with the latest EV policies. They, like me, are in for a real shock and disappointment, but in their cases, the business model simply won't work and will consign them to total collapse and bankruptcy. What am I talking about? Well, take Volkswagen. Back in the 70s, 80s and right through to today... The mass market cars were the Polo and the Golf. They made millions of them, each in a range of models, basic, deluxe, GT and hot hatch. They did make bigger cars like the Passat, but very much smaller numbers. Ford made the Fiesta and Focus in their millions, tens of millions. They did make the Sierras, but their mass market, again, still the Ford, and Fiesta, uh, the Ford Fiesta and Focus. Vauxhall had their own mass models, the Corsa and the Astra. Again, larger models were made, but in much smaller numbers. Toyota had the Corolla and Camry, which they sold in so many millions they became the largest car manufacturer in the world. Fiat had the 500, the Panda and the Punto. Renault had their 5, Clio and Megane. Well, success to get into mass production, and the first one there wins the bulk of the market, while all others dash to catch up. 
or entering the secondary niche market reserved for the likes of Lamborghini, Ferrari, Rolls-Royce, where your cars are so ridiculously expensive that you make a good profit from each one, irrespective of the volume. In fact, volume and hand-built quality are contradictory. Those who choose the mass market must cut costs to the bone and offer their cars at a cheap price. This is exactly how they reach mass production, dating right back to the very first Ford production line in 1913 at Highland Park in Michigan. And this is how they became so absolutely huge and successful. And they were indeed very successful. Despite a constant battle for first place, they all sold millions of good cheap cars. Today, just forget for the moment EVs, look at the mass market. It is still the Golfs and the Astras and the Focuses, the Corsas, the Corollas. They are all still in everybody's top 20. But recently this has begun to change, away from saloons and small hatchbacks towards larger, far more practical SUVs. Nissan have the Duke and Qashqai. Ford has Puma, Vauxhall Mocha, Toyota RAV4, Hyundai Tucson, Kia Sportage, to name just a few. And these now appear regularly in the top 10. We know our customers and our markets, as Jim Farley, CEO of Ford, recently said when totally dismissing Tesla. Now let's look at prices. Budget small cars today, Corsas, Fiestas, Camrys and the like, are all below 20000 starting price. Mid-range, Focus, Astras, Corollas, they start in the twenty to 25000 range. The larger SUVs typically start between twenty five and 30000 Even premium brands like Mercedes sell the, S, uh, the A-Class for 30000 and the GLA for thirty three. while BMW sell the Model 1 and 2 for 30000 and the Series 3 is, is only 40000 up in the larger SUV models, we see Hyundai and Kia offering starting around 35000 This is why they are selling so many. This is what got them into mass production and huge production savings. This is how they grew and prospered until now. EVs appeared and threw the market into total chaos. Tesla had arrived and Elon Musk had a secret mission statement that he published publicly way back in 2006. Now, to paraphrase it, it said, its aim was to speed up the transition to renewable energy by producing compelling mass-market EVs at an affordable price. Step one was to produce a really expensive niche market car to produce the revenue to allow them to move to step two, make a large expensive family car to give them the revenue and profit to get to step three. Make a cheaper mid-range family car to produce the revenue to allow them to finally make a mass market affordable EV with com compelling features based on all they had learned over the preceding years. Now, I know some of you hate Elon, but look at all the wording here. Their first car was the Roadster. That cost around $150,000. That's clearly a niche market, clearly very compelling, and clearly sold in sufficient numbers to give Tesla the revenue it needed to produce its models S and X. These are $100,000 cars, clearly luxury and prestige, nowhere near mass market, but again, they sold enough of them and made enough profit to be able to afford uh, to launch the Model 3 and the Y the mid-range family cars at around $40,000. All of this was done in less than 10 years, and it's this that got my attention. It's this that the vast majority of the population and the motoring world have totally missed. Tesla regard their Model 3 and Y cars as expensive family cars not mass market cars. And two things immediately jump out. Their exp expensive family car, the Model Y, is now the best selling car of any sort in the world. And second, $40,000 is not what Tesla sees as the mass market. Well, this analysis should send Ford, VW, Mercedes, Toyota, and all the other manufacturers into full on panic mode. 
Tesla regard the EV mass market as sub $25,000 or £25,000, just like the legacy automakers did in their day and many still do today. Tesla aims to make almost the same profit margin on their sub $25,000 model as they do on their Model 3 and Y. The Tesla sub $25,000 new model, as yet unnamed, is scheduled for production in their just announced and started mega factory in Mexico in 2024. Does anybody, anyone out there, have even the slightest idea what Tesla regards as a mass market? If they consider their Model Y the best-selling car in the world as a premium family car, not the mass market, just what numbers are they actually forecasting? I have to say, if Tesla released a mass market EV today at less than £25,000 here in the UK, it'll absolutely slaughter all the opposition overnight. If you can buy a Tesla cheaper than a petrol Astra or Focus or Corolla, the ice car industry is doomed, gone, kaput, finito. Nothing can save them. And that sub £25,000 Tesla is likely to be here in the UK in 2025, just two years from now. So, what are legacy automakers doing? Well, I mentioned my rental property for a very hard lesson. Ford, Vauxhall, VW, Renault, Peugeot, Citroën, all the others, they're busy converting their old ice factory to EVs only and have just released their latest EV offerings there. Astra EV, Peugeot 208 EV, uh, Fiat 500, Mini, Citroën C4 and many, many others. Now, really good move. Sell what you're good at. Sell your mass market successful models, but just sell them as EVs. That was a clear winner in the past. That was obvious. Surely that will work in the future. This is the way forward. But stop. Look at the price. The Astra EV starts at £39,000. Citroen C4 EV, £37,000. Peugeot, £38,000. VW ID3, £37,000. The list goes on. Moving up into the SUVs, exactly the same thing. Mustang Mach-E, 50,000. Mercedes EQA, 49,000. BMW iX3, 65,000. If you previously bought an Astra or Golf or Focus or Renault Clio or Fiat Punto in the 20 to 30,000 pound range, you are highly unlikely to spend an extra 10 to 15,000 to go electric in exactly the same brand in an almost identical car. If you have over £30,000 to spend and want to, get, want to go electric, you can get an MG4 or a BYD Dolphin for 26000 or in 2025 you can get a Tesla. If you can afford over 40000 now, you are very unlikely to buy an Astra EV top of the range when you can get a Mercedes or BMW or Hyundai or Tesla or Polestar and many others for exactly the same amount. If you've got 50000 to spend, you won't be seen dead in a Vauxhall Astra, no matter what the spec. The legacy automakers have simply done what I, in my total naivety, did with my investment house. I believe that if I renovated the house to a very high standard, that, would pe that people would pay more, even in that very poor rundown area. I learned that they won't. Well, likewise, Ford... Mercedes and Renault and all the others think if they build a really nice EV, people will pay way over the odds for it just because it is nice and made by Ford or Renault or Citroën. Well, they won't. Plus, have they not heard that we're now in a recession or, or at least a downturn? Do they not know that all household bills have rocketed and people are looking to make savings? Do they really truly believe that their customers will pay ten to fifteen thousand pound extra just for their name? And have you seen what they offer? Now don't get me wrong, they are trying, but their efforts are clearly pathetic. Imagine when Apple launched the very first iPhone in 2007. A total revolution, design, function, performance and style, but ridiculously expensive. And imagine Android had responded by making their own version with a slower processor, smaller screen, lower resolution, worse operating system and less memory, but then charged 30% dearer than the Apple iPhone. 
That's the equivalent of what the legacy makers are offering their customers. Android succeeded and overtook Apple in sheer numbers sold by offering a smartphone that was not at that time quite as good, but was at a very much cheaper price. Do legacy makers never look back at what worked and what didn't? Well, the largest market, China, once valued their premium car makers, the Mercedes, BMW and the like, buying them at inflated prices. But today, although still luxurious and premium, they've fallen well behind in technology and are still using ICE engines that produce pollution. While their own locally produced cars, once regarded as cheap and nasty, have moved to next generation technology and the Chinese do love their gadgets. Yes, of course they still produce cheap rubbish. Absolutely loads of it. But also some of the best products in the world. The Tesla Model Y is made there. As are Dyson Hoovers, Abercrombie & Fitch, Nike. Few would class these as cheap Chinese rubbish. Is there hope? I doubt it. It's probably far too late. Ford has just announced a major cutback in EV production. Ah, that was obvious. They could not continue losing over £30,000 per car sold. The other manufacturers will follow. But why have they failed? Well, another part of the problem is that Ford and others sell their cars to dealers and the dealers set the prices. I watch a fascinating YouTube video uh, called Car Questions Answered, run by a chap called Brandon. He's an American used car dealer. He reports as dealers saw a reduction in new car sales during the pandemic due to supply chain issues, the dealers simply raised prices to make the same margins from fewer sales. Markups of $20,000 or $30,000 were common. You probably well remember when your own car left in value. Well, having got used to those higher prices, the dealers are hanging on to them now that new stock is flowing back in in copious numbers. Recently, Brandon counted 200 F-150 pickups in stock at one dealer. All of them had markups. The average price of a pickup today has leapt from under 40,000 before the pandemic to an average of 60,000 today. Ford get none of that markup. Well, the problem's a legion. I've just touched on a few. What they should have done is what they do and have always done best. Well, first, they should have accepted that EVs are here to stay very much earlier instead of laughing at them and rejecting them as a gimmick. They should have started taking it more seriously much earlier. Now, they should have got in while the market was still wide open and built even just a single factory from their huge profits aimed precisely at their own mass market, the small family hatchback, the Astras, Fiestas, Focuses and Corollas. They should have bought in whatever they needed in huge numbers to be able to offer these as a genuine alternative to their successful ICE car models at an identical price, all or nothing. Now that would have worked instantly. Offered a choice at the same price, many, many more people would have instantly chosen the e version, EV version for its lower running costs and total lack of servicing. And that would have blown Tesla right out of the water. If Ford, VW and Vauxhall had launched their own budget small cars at competitive and comparable prices to ICE versions, Tesla would have been left high and dry as a small niche luxury performance car maker along the lines of Lamborghini and Aston Martin and Rolls Royce. No threat to any of them at all. They have themselves to blame. They simply got it wrong. They are just now finding out that they cannot sell £40,000 EVs in a recession into a £25,000 market. Not in any number. They'll sell some, of course. There's somebody out there who's owned Astras all their lives and would never drive anything else, or someone who makes absolutely no inquiries whatsoever and just assumes that all EVs are the same, so sticks with their preferred and trusted brand. But they won't hit the mass market with them. And that's critical. Tesla will. If Tesla make a sub £25,000 mass market EV, their future is guaranteed. 
You will see waiting lists in the tens or hundreds of millions. They will rule the world. So can legacy automakers do anything? No. We often hear the phrase, too little, too late. I should also add, too slow. Look at factories. Ford and GM have announced this year and last year new factories opening 2025 or 2026. Tesla bought the land in Mexico this year for its new mega factory and it will actually enter production next year, 2024. Shanghai went from brownfield to final electrical installation in 168 days. That's building it. Not even six months. Tesla, BYD, NIO, Xpeng, SIAC are all building new factories and getting them into production faster than legacy automakers can even get planning permission granted. I fear that anything and everything legacy automakers do will be long since out of date before it even starts. Just watch out for maker after maker cutting back on their EV targets and falling well short of their own production targets. And an increasing emphasis on looking into hybrids and dabbling into hydrogen. Anything to stave off bankruptcy. Well, thanks for watching to the end. I'm Dave.